In the early 1950s, production fighter designers were trying to push closer and closer to the sound barrier, but try as they might, their planes could not break the sound barrier. The engineers identified the major challenge to be a dramatic increase in drag, known as transonic drag rise, as planes approached the speed of sound or Mach 1. This was mainly due to the formation of shock waves starting around Mach 0.8, leading to what's called wave drag. The US Air Force hoped to build its first supersonic fighter, the F-102, but early test flights of its prototype showed it couldn't even reach Mach 1, despite having a powerful engine designed for Mach 1.2. The engineers were baffled by this lack of performance until a NACA researcher named Dr. Richard Whitcomb developed the area rule. Dr. Whitcomb experimented with several different axisymmetric bodies and wing body combinations in a transonic wind tunnel. What he found was that the key factor influencing drag was not just the aircraft's shape, but how its cross-sectional area changed from nose to tail. Rapid or uneven changes in that area caused large increases in drag. In other words, the drag created on these shapes was directly related to the change in cross-sectional area of the vehicle from the nose to the tail. Dr. Whitcomb tested four different models in a transonic wind tunnel. The four models were a plain cylindrical fuselage, the same fuselage with wings attached, a version with a bulge, and another with a narrowed or pinched section where the wings were placed. He observed that simply adding wings to the cylinder doubled the drag, and adding a bulge of equivalent volume of that of the wings had the same effect. However, when he tapered the fuselage around the wings, the overall drag dropped back down to nearly the same level as the original plane cylinder. This led to a crucial insight, minimizing drag at transonic speeds depends on maintaining a smooth and continuous change in cross-sectional area from front to back. The area rule emerged from this, stating that wherever components like wings or tails protrude from an aircraft, the body should be narrowed accordingly to avoid sudden increases in volume, which otherwise generate extra drag. The ideal shape for minimizing the wave drag is called the Sears Hawk body which features a gradual, smooth change in cross-sectional area along its length. The closer the volume distribution of an aircraft or other high-speed vehicle comes to the ideal Sears Hawk body, the lower its wave drag will be. Whitcomb's research marked a significant leap forward in understanding supersonic aerodynamics and had a direct impact on the design of the F-102 fighter jet. In response to his findings, Convair engineers promptly reworked the aircraft's fuselage, incorporating the area rule by shaping it with a narrowed, coke bottle, or, wasted, section. This redesign, combined with an upgraded engine, enabled the F-102 to not only break the sound barrier with ease but also reach speeds exceeding Mach 1.5. The area rule can be seen at work in a lot of other designs as well. The area rule allows for two solutions to create a smooth cross-sectional area distribution. We can either decrease the area of the fuselage where the wings and tails are attached, as explained previously, or we can increase the cross-sectional area before the wings and tails. A good example is the Boeing 747, known for its distinctive hump. This hump, which houses the cockpit and upper passenger deck, increases the cross-sectional area of the forward fuselage and has the effect of evening the volume distribution over the length of the aircraft. As a result, the 747 is able to cruise efficiently at a slightly higher speed than most other airliners since the increase in transonic wave drag is delayed. The area rule is also one of the reasons for placing the large jet engines slightly ahead of the wings in most modern airliners. In some aircraft, the engines are mounted behind the wing for the same reason. If you found this video informative, please give it a like. For more videos on aircraft design, subscribe to the channel. You can watch these videos next for more on aircraft design. Thank you for watching.